Hey there, you awesome people. I hope your day has been nothing short of fantastic. Welcome back to a brand new episode of What If Deku Ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Izuka used to be quirkless, but that all changed when he sunk his teeth into an unusual fruit, granting him the power to stretch his body like rubber. With this newfound ability, he's on a quest to become the ultimate hero. Don't forget to shower some appreciation onto the incredible author responsible for this fanfiction. The link is conveniently waiting for you in the description box down below. If you're totally vibing with this what if scenario, drop me a comment and let your thoughts be known. And while you're at it, don't miss out on other mind-blowing what ifs on this channel. Alright, without further ado, let's dive straight into this video. It was a nice and sunny day. The birds were singing while the bakers were putting out fresh bread. People were heading to wherever they needed to. All seemed peaceful. Listen, heroes. Don't come after me, otherwise, I'll kill this unfortunate family. Shouted an enormous muscular villain named Trapezius Hatgear, who currently held a family of three in his right arm. Mount Lady, Kamui Wood, and another hero could only grit their teeth at their helplessness. The villain was strong and fast, and Mount Lady could not use her titan form in fear of harming the hostages. As the villain seemed to start bragging, they all heard a voice. Have no fear, family. Misery smash. All Might dashed right past the villain from behind, and Karate chopped him in the head, instantly knocking him out while securing the family to safety. Why? Because I am here while on my way to work, declared All Might, causing the crowd that had formed near the incident to cheer. As he put the sobbing family down and saluted the officers for their hard work, his ears could not help but pick up another cry for help. It's a hit and run. Despite the fact he would be running late to work, All Might could not ignore the cry for help and ran towards the scene. As he was jumping, he frowned as he noticed his powers were slowly but surely weakening after passing one for all. Not to mention the time he could sustain his muscular form was decreasing. Still, he did not regret doing so, and knew even when one for all was gone from his body, he would never be alone, just like Nana said back at UA during the freak accident with Izuku. It looks like my time is nearing, muttered All Might to himself, still, I must last long enough to face him if he comes back. Not to mention he had found some promising results in fixing his body. It would be good to be able to eat again. After stopping the car, he couldn't help but sweat drop when he heard a fugitive had barricaded himself in the next town over. He couldn't help but jump towards the scene once more. Today's foundational hero studies will be a bit special, announced Shota to his class after lunch. The original plan was to have class wanted to be supervised by a three-man team compassing of me, All Might, and one other. Instead, class 1 and 1B will be working together for this special class, along with the reserve student Hitoshi Shinso. Vlad King will also be accompanying us as the fourth member. I wonder what happened to warrant such change. Thought Izuku, oh well, it means that we can be with Itsuka. Sensei. What are we doing? Asked Hanta. From disasters, shipwrecks, and everything between, stated Shota as he held out a card labeled rescue, we'll be doing rescue training. The students glanced at each other in nervousness or excitement, their chattering starting to grow until Shota put a stop to that. You can decide whether or not to put on your hero costume or your PE clothes, as some costumes may not be suitable for such training or will limit you, continued Shota. The training shall take place off campus, so we'll be taking a bus. Get changing and meet outside. In the end, they all donned their hero costumes, as they wanted to use this training to see what limitations that were imposed on themselves without their notice. Izuku was talking with Momo and Achako when he felt hands covering his eyes. Desu. Hey Itsuka, smiled Izuku as he gently lifted the hands off and turned around to see Itsuka on her hero costume for the first time. He almost stumbled as soon as he did, as Itsuka was wearing a light blue kipau that nicely framed her body. An additional protective corset was around her waist to help support her body when she used her quirk big fist, as well as support her chest. And finally, despite the costume mending at her knees, slits were on the side to allow her full movement, as well as giving Izuku a good look of all of her leg, all the way to the short black spats. Lastly, she had a brown utility belt for emergencies. So, how do I look? Said Itsuka with a mischievous smirk, while she also wore a black domino mask. You you look great. Izuku almost yelled out. Thanks. I like your hat, smiled Itsuka as her hand glided down his chest, your vest is a bit crooked, let me fix that up. Mineta was off a bit of way staring at the class 1B girls in their hero costume. Those girls look delicious, drooled Mineta, only to get a swift smack to the face by Tsuyu's tongue. So this is class 1A, who has the top students. Yelled out a blonde boy, they must think they're so. He didn't get to finish as Kendo was already upon him in a flash, and Karate chopped him in the neck. Sorry about that, that's Nido Manama, apologized Itsuka, he has a bit of an inferiority complex, but he's a good person still. Class Presidents. I suggest that we introduce ourselves to our fellow classmates from 1B, as they are a part of the Heroics course, proposed Tenya. Seeing as it was a good idea, Momo and Itsuka nodded as the two classes began to introduce themselves a bit, and even fostered some friendships based on their likes, hobbies, and whatnot. 
Ah, Shinso-san, greeted Izuku after noticing Shinso arrive late to the meet and greet. Are you just going to wear your PE clothes? Have to, they haven't made my costume yet, replied Hitoshi. Unlike you all, I'm still only reserve, and so don't get to order one like you all. Ah, sorry, for bringing that up, blushed Izuku. Hitoshi shook his head, don't worry about it. If it wasn't for your suggestion, I don't think I would have been able to keep this reserve status. Your suggestion during the quirk apprehension test helped me out a lot. I should be thanking you. That being said, added Hitoshi as he stretched his arms out, don't think I'm going to stay in this position forever. I will become a hero, even if I have to knock out someone's position. Izuku couldn't help but smile at Hitoshi's determination. Alright, get to your assigned buses, stated Shota as he walked out, looking as though he wished he could be sleeping. Shinso, you'll be with class 1B for the trip to get to know them more, as you were with my class the first time. Everyone quickly got onto their assigned buses, and were soon heading towards their location. Izuku found himself sitting next to Tsuyu and Sato, while Achako and Momo had taken another pair of seats for themselves. As you might know, I tend to generally say what's on my mind, stated Tsuyu before turning to Izuku. Izuku-chan, your quirk seems like a mix of Robur and All Might. Izuku's mind suddenly halted for a few seconds at this statement, allowing Ajiro to intervene. Whoa, hold up there. Midoriya's quirk is having a robber like body. True he's strong, but it's not like All Might's strong. Jiro, Izuku-chan managed to punch a flying truck away before, replied Tsuyu. Wait, when did that happen? Asked Sato. We met once a month before the entrance exam, explained Tsuyu. I was with my siblings when a truck came flying towards us from a villain. Izuku-chan stretched out his arm and punched it, stopping it in his path. Dude, that's so manly. Shouted Ajiro, you have a strength enhancement quirk too. Man, you can do a lot of flashy stuff. They're not exactly, lied Izuku, his mind racing through, but Ajiro had already moved on to another subject. All I have is my quirk hardening. It's good in a fight, but it's not very flashy. Ah, but it's still pretty neat, said Izuku, latching onto the different subject, your quirk's more than enough to go pro. Yeah, but a pro hero has to think about popularity, too, sighed Ajiro. My naval laser is at a pro level in terms of flashiness and strength, bragged Yuga. Yay, until you blow up your own stomach, teased Mina, causing Yuga to wince. Well if you want to talk about strong and flashy, grinned Ajiro, then it's gotta be Midoriya, Bakugo, and Todoroki, our monster trio here. Though I don't know if class 1B also has them too. Bakugo is always mad, so he'll never be popular, stated Tsuyu bluntly, causing him to twinge in anger and draw a response, to which Tsuyu used it as an example. Bakugo being teased, that's certainly a new sight Izuku laughed to himself, as Denki also joined in the fun of teasing him. What a vulgar conversation, sighed Momo. I think it's funny. Laughed Chako. Meanwhile, at the 1B bus, Izuka was doing her best to have Hitoshi included into conversations, to which he was not used to doing. Years of being judged as a possible villain made it difficult for him to open up to anyone. So what is your quirk anyway? Asked Satsuna curiously, never saw it. I think I have somewhat of a clue, added Itsuka, remembering the time when Hitoshi intervened to stop a fight. Brainwashing, replied Hitoshi. Wow that quirk sounds villainous, said Jirado Shishida automatically, causing Hitoshi to wince. He had shaggy fur all over his body and wore glasses. Shishida-san. How dare you judge someone just by their quirk. Repent for your sins. Stated Ibarra Shizako, who had vines for her hair, and used her vine to whack Jirado on the head. Aw, oh, sorry, sorry, Jirado hastily apologized, I didn't mean to say it like that. Sir Shinso. Lady Shizaki, please forgive my outburst. I, of all people, should know what it's like to be judged solely based on appearance and quirk, beast. Many people considered me to be a violent and mindless beast due to it when I am a gentleman at heart. It's alright, smiled Hitoshi, seeing his honest apology. Ah such an impressive quirk. Declared Monoma, tell me, do those class want to know about your quirk? Not all of them, I think, shrugged Hitoshi, though I wouldn't be surprised if they all did. Midoriya was one of the first to know, and I do owe it to him for, to say the least, think outside the box. Ah such a shame, Manama Makswund, you could have been our secret weapon against them. Itsuka, sadly, won't let us. Whatever mocking words he was going to say was cut short by Itsuka's shop. Izuku has been my childhood friend for years. I'm not going to break it up just for some class rivalry, warned Itsuka, keep it up and I'll chop you. You already did thought the audience who was with them. Alright students. Get ready to disembark. Bart Vlad King, we've arrived. They all got off the bus to see a large dome building before seeing someone in a large space suit waiting for them. Everyone, I have been waiting for you, declared the person in the space suit. Oh my gosh, it's the space hero number 13. Push to Chako, he's my favorite hero. The gentleman hero who does his best work in rescue scenarios, added Izuku. Such a gentle soul, always rescuing those in need, praised Abar. A true gentleman indeed, not a Gerardo. They were swiftly led into the dome building to see so many variations of rescue training areas, all built to simulate real-time disaster. It looks like Universal Studio Japan. 
said Ijiro and Tetsutetsu, another student with rather peculiar eye markings around his eyes. Flood zone, landslide, fire, etc., stated 13 proudly, every natural disaster you could imagine, I've created a simulation of it. I built this facility myself. I call this place the Unseen Simulation Joint, otherwise known as USJ. So it is USJ thought all the students at once. 13, where's All Might? Asked Shoda, he's supposed to be here. Ah, about that, whispered 13 as Shoda and Vlad King got closer, holding up three fingers, it seems like he overdid it on hero work on the way here, and reached his limit. So he's currently resting at the lounge back at UA. That's the height of irrationality, sighed Shoda, I would have called his Ashi over then instead. Well, let's get this started first. HMPH, my class will do better than yours, huffed Vlad King before glancing at Izuku. He was not sure about the boy's connection with All Might, but he knew there was something. After all, why would he bring the child to UA to heal instead of to the nearest hospital? Though Nezu, All Might, and Recovery Girl refused to say anything. Ah, Sekijiro-sensei, greeted Izuku, thank you for your help that time. I never did get to thank you. Ma, as long as you're fine, waved Vlad King. Hey, you met our teacher before? Asked Hitsuka. Only once, said Izuku before turning his attention towards 13, effectively dropping the subject, since 13 began to speak about his quirk, and just how dangerous it was. 13 continued to explain how each teacher's trials had expanded on their own hidden potential, and the dangers of using them against someone. This class will show you a new perspective. Lecture 13, you will learn to utilize your quirks to save lives. You all have powers that are not meant to harm others, but to protect and save. I hope that after this stay, you will leave with the understanding that you are all meant to help people. Thank you for listening. As 13 bowed, the students clapped at his speech. He's so awesome. Clapped Chako enthusiastically. Such a gentle soul, remarked Ibarra as light somehow shone upon her body, I pray that he never be harmed. Alright, let's get started, clapped Shoda, first. Abruptly, an electrical surge traveled through all the lights, dimming the whole room by a noticeable amount. All three pro heroes suddenly knew something was wrong, while a chill crawled up their spine. Suddenly, a dark purple rift appeared in front of the fountain that was in the middle of the whole dome. The rift suddenly expanded, the purple mist spreading wide. As the pro heroes directed their attention to it, out came a hand, followed by a face with a severed hand on it. Gather up and don't move, shouted Shoda, scaring the students. Do as he says, roared Vlad as he readied his fists, 13, defend the students. Class presidents, control your class and get ready to lead them out. We have villains incoming. Seeing their protective nature, the students couldn't help but obey as villains began to flood the area from the mist. The most prominent ones were the man with multiple severed fake hands all around his body and face, the giant humanoid with its brain clearly visible, and the purple mist that slowly reformed into a human figure. I see only Racerhead, 13, and Vlad King, stated the purple mist, according to the staff schedule, All Might should have been here, not Vlad King. Did they swap? And I see, 41 students instead of 20. They must have decided to change plans when we broke in. As expected of UA though luckily we thought of that possibility beforehand. So they're the scum responsible for trespassing, growled Shoda as he put on his goggles. Where is he? Stated the man with hands all over his body and face, where is All Might? I even went through the trouble of bringing all these people, too. All Might, the symbol of peace, I wonder if he'll come if we kill some kids. The fact he said that so nonchalantly and loudly for all of them to hear sent shivers down quite a few students' spines. Villains how they get in here? Shouted Ajiro. Yay, he'd be stupid enough to sneak into a school for heroes. Added Tetsutetsu. Sensei, what about the trespasser sensor? Asked Momo. We have them, not at 13, though a bit hesitant. Does that mean they're only here or at the whole school? Stated Shoto, either way, if the sensors aren't working, that means someone has a quirk that's disabling them. And since we're isolated away from the main campus, continued Monoma, his usual sarcastic and flamboyant speech absent for once, during a time where we're scheduled to be here. That means nobody knows what's happening here. Quite smart for a bunch of fools. This surprise attack is well coordinated, aimed to kill, finished Yui, her usually stoic face absent. 13. Begin evacuation, barks Shoda, if they're jamming the sensors, then most likely they're jamming communications. The quirk is either an electrical based one or radio wave based. Kaminari, try to contact the school with your quirk. Class presidents, organize your classes. Make sure you keep a head count on everyone, warned Vlad King. You can't fight all of them by yourselves, exclaimed Tetsutetsu. Yeah we can help out, added Ajiro. HMPH, don't underestimate us pro heroes, smirked Shoda, no good hero is just a one-two pony. Both he and Vlad King jumped off stairs and right towards the enemy. Shooting squad, let's go. Grinned a villain with gun barrels for fingers. A trio of villains tried to fire upon them, only to find out their quirks were cancelled due to Eraserhead erasing their quirks. Upon landing, Eraserhead already had all three wrapped in his steel cloth scarf. 
With a swift hug, all three of them flew right into each other above Eraserhead's head, knocking each other out. Dumbus. That's Eraserhead. He can cancel quirks out just by looking at you. Shouted a villain. Cancelling quirks, eh? Another villain cockily grinned as he charged forward with forearms and rocks all over his body. Let's see if that works against heteromorphic mutant type quirks. Nope, I can't, said Eraserhead blandly before punching the villain in the face, distorting it as his fist sunk in before knocking him away. However, statistically people like you tend to shine in close combat. Eraserhead threw his scarf forward, wrapping it around his opponent's leg before dodging another villain's punch, and then kicking him during his spin, so I've already taken the proper countermeasures. He threw the villain into a crowd of villains, knocking most of them out in one go. Four others tried to jump in, but Vlad swiftly punched them in the face, knocking them out. Got you? Shouted a rather burly type villain, only for Vlad to easily catch it with one hand. Suddenly, blood came gushing out of his gauntlet, ensnaring the villain's hand and hardening. You, let me go. Struggled the villain. Vlad's response was to roar and using the villain as a bat, knocking several others before spinning and tossing the villain towards what seemed to be the leader of villains. Before it could land on the one with hands all over his body, the other giant one caught the villain. Nomu, throw him away, he's blocking my sight, stated the leader. Nomu squawked and kicked the villain away. Shigaraki Tamura, please do not throw whomever we gather like that, sighed the miss villain. Not like it matters Kurigiri, grunted Shigaraki. We have plenty more to spare. Though even in a mob, they can't seem to take down those two pro heroes. He began analyzing the situation, learning the two heroes' strength. I hate pro heroes, growled Shigaraki, ordinary villains don't stand a chance against them. As Racer had blinked, Kurigiri found his window of opportunity. Sensei, admired Hitashi as he watched Eraser had decimate villains with just CQC and his scarf, using his quirk only when necessary. Come on, we have to get going, said Izuku, pulling Hitashi along with him with the help of Satsuna. The class presidents were in the front leading while the vice presidents were in the back, making sure nobody was left behind. Thirteen was quickly leading both classes towards the exit, when Kurgiri suddenly appeared in front of them all, blocking the exit. I can't allow you all to leave so easily, stated Kurgiri. Shit, the moment I blinked, he took that window. He's probably the most troublesome of all Eraser mentally shouted in his mind. Though? Shouted Vlad, who also noticed the situation. He used his blood to form two large warhammers, and batted several villains away to clear a path, get to them. I got this here. Hmm, no time for pleasantries, stated Kurgiri, I guess I'll make this quick. We, the League of Villains, have trespassed this home of heroes, Yue Hai, so as to end the life of All Might, the symbol of peace. Though since he's not here, my role remains unchanged. Thirteen flipped out one of his finger caps to fight, but Katsuki, Ichiro, and Tetsutetsu all reacted quickly and rushed Kurigiri. Ichiro hardened his fist, Tetsutetsu steeled his, and together the boys aimed for Kurigiri's head, while Bakugo had both hands out and blasted the bottom. Before the dust even cleared, Pony fired her horns into the cloud, hoping to do more damage. Ha, didn't expect us to take you out first, did you? Taunted Ajiro. Yay, we kicked your butt. Shouted Pony, reverting to English in her current state of adrenaline. Oh my, that was dangerous, Kurgiri said nonchalantly as the dust began to clear. Even if you are all students, you are all golden goose eggs. Students, move out of the way. Declared 13 as he pointed his finger towards Kurgiri, but it was too late. Hey, what are you doing? Shouted Hitashi, helping Kurgiri with monologue, but Kurgiri was smarter than that. First do the job, and then announce it. Eraser had it managed to start up the stairs, helping to make it when he had to dodge right as something crashed into the stairs next to him. Vlad. What happened? Asked Eraserhead. That damn brute's for brain, grunted Vlad as he picked himself up, the one that they call Nomu from what I heard hit me even with my blood shield up. Indeed, as Eraser had it broken away, Shigaraki ordered Nomu to stop him. Nomu roared and charged forward, and Vlad tried to block him with a blood shield. Nomu merely punched at the shield, shattering it while sending Vlad flying back. Shit, the kids. Shouted Vlad as he whirled around, as did Eraserhead. Go, I'll take care of this. Kurgiri had allowed his mist to spread and covered the majority of students. Tenyu grabbed whoever was nearest to him and ran out of the mist, which were Chako and Kinoko Kamuri, a female with a bob haircut. Shoji grabbed Yuga and Kasei Tsuburaba, as they were closest to him, and managed to anchor himself into the ground to avoid being sucked in. Isetsu Wei fused his feet into the ground while grabbing Sado and Tagaru Kamikiri, fusing his hands into their skin to avoid being pulled away. Jirota transformed, grabbing Nirinjaki Shoda and Koda, and anchor himself down similar to Shoji. The rest tried to stabilize themselves or dodge, but in the end were sucked into the portal. Izuku and Hitashi glanced at each other, and with a swift nod, tossed Satsuna away from the mist before it could take her. Everyone, grab hold of someone. Shouted Izuku before the mist completely took them away as he grabbed Hitashi and stretched his arm to whoever was nearest, which happened to be Senator Kabar. My job is to scatter you all and watch your eye in agony as we torment you. Announced Kurigiri as he finished his job. 
everyone, shouted Tanya in worry as the mist dispersed to reveal those who managed to anchor themselves in or avoided. Two, less students were thrown off, mused Kurgiri, all the better, I suppose, though. That just means less students in the other areas I've sent them. Thirteen could only glare as he worried about all the students. Akajue Hai, Tashinori was admonishing himself for putting hero work ahead of teaching. He needed some more rest, but if he did so, by the time he arrived, class would have already ended. Before he could leave, Principal Nezu caught him in the lounge, where he prepared his rather long-winded lecture about prioritizing his responsibilities, not to mention there were plenty of hero agencies around town that could have solved the problems. Both were peacefully unaware of what was happening at yesterday. Shoji, can you detect where everyone is? Asked Tanya hurriedly. Shoji stretched out his tentacle limbs, transforming them into ears and eyes, before confirming that all 41 students were still at Yusuke in the live. What do we do? Asked Sato as he got ready to consume some sugar. Physical attacks do not seem to work against this villain, growled Jiroda in his beast form. Thirteen pondered for a second before coming to a snap decision, Tanya Iida. I have an important assignment for you. You'll need to run back to school and tell them what is happening here. That rune zone. Die. Oh shit run away. Mommy. Akugo laughed as he blasted his way through dozens of villains. Think he needs help. Swear dropped Hyuyurin, a male with a braided ponytail. Hey, we can't let him take all the fun. Shouted at Jiro as he punched his way forward. Hell yeah. Agreed Tetsutetsu. Of course I get stuck with all the hotheads, sighed Hiryu. Ha, this one's weak. Shouted another villain, trying to stab Hiryu. Hiryu merely transformed his skin into hard scales, easily deflecting the knife before punching the villain in the head. And again, I suppose I can't argue with their results, smirked Hiryu before diving into the fray. As one of the villains was getting away from this hell, Ichiro saw him and jumped up. Throw me! Shouted Ichiro as he tucked in his legs. Katsuki grinned as he slammed an explosion at Ichiro's feet, sending him flying into the villain. Hey, me next! Shouted Tetsutetsu as he also jumped up in the air. Katsuki did the same once more, and Tetsutetsu managed to tackle two of the villains before crashing into the wall. You wanna join in on this, scorpion hair? Asked Katsuki menacingly as small explosions popped from his hands. No thanks. Shouted Hiryu, putting his hands up for emphasis. Conflagration zone. This isn't good, rasped Kijiro Bondo, who was shaped like a glue bottle. I can't get them sticky with all this fire. Not enough shade, grunted Shihai Kuroro, a male whose skin is black as night. I can't get into the shade to help out. Too much light for me too, not a Fumikage. Aye, it's way too bright for me to go full out, admitted Dark Shadow. These flames are hindering me from acting upon the Lord's name to punish these evildoers, pouted Ibar. Haha, ha, can't do anything here can you? Taunted one of the villains, especially you ice boy. Son of Endeavor indeed. Put a bit of fire, and you can't use your ice quirk. Wish you had your daddy's quirk now don't you? You all seem to be under a misunderstanding, glared Shoto, getting angry at the mention of his father. Having all this fire around doesn't mean I can't use my quirk. It just means I don't have to thaw myself as much. With the frosty breath and step, the whole area changed from a fiery city to a frozen one in a second. All the villains were promptly frozen, unable to move. What the hell? Whispered a villain, his teeth chattering from the cold. He would have yelled louder if it wasn't the fact that it had taken almost all his strength to even whisper, what are you? Shoto ignored his questions before interrogating some of them why and how they would kill All Might. The villains began to shake in fear as Shoto described just how they would die if he didn't do anything. Flood zone. Why? cried Denki as he splashed into the flood zone. He quickly began swimming upwards when a shark-faced villain suddenly popped in front of him. Oh look a chum has come, grinned the villain, nothing personal, but say a sucker. Tsuyu promptly appeared and landed a dropkick on the villain's face before springing off him, grabbing Denki with her tongue before quickly swimming away. Sayonor, said the villain as he flew away. Sayonor, croaked Tsuyu as she quickly swam upwards, carrying Denki with her tongue and Mineta with her arms. Reaching the surface, Tsuyu gently placed Denki onto the boat, where Kyuka and Hanta were there waiting. Hanta had grabbed Kyuka before they disappeared into Kurgiri's portal, and when they appeared above the shipwreck zone, Hanta was close enough to launch his tape and drag the both of them onto the ship. For a frog, your breasts are pretty big, coughed Mineta as he purposely rubbed his face to Tsuyu's chest from the side. Tsuyu blushed a little before being irked and tossing Mineta into the ship with much more force than was needed. She quickly climbed up the boat onto the deck for safety. Oh good, you're alright, said Hanta. You guys see any more of our classmates here? I only saw three splashes before landing on the boat. Kiro, I didn't see anyone either, nodded Tsuyu. Hold on, I'll check it out, said Kyuka as she plugged her ear near the water. A second later, she quickly pulled it out in a panic, fear written on her face. We're completely surrounded, gasped Kyuka. As if to punctuate her statement, jeers started to come out from the water, taunting them. We're going to kill you, shouted one of them, causing Mineta to panic a bit. PRR, if they weren't in the water, I'd electrocute them all, growled Denki. 
The light bulb went above all of their heads except for Denki himself, though he was the power source for it. Hanto quickly taped a portion of the top deck for them all to stand on, while Tsuyu and Kyuka pushed Denki off the boat. What the hell? Cried out Denki as he landed into the water, much to the confusion to all the villains, I can't fight in the water. I can't be relied on. Use your quirk. Shouted Kyuka, water conducts electricity. Oh yay. Blinked Denki before a malicious grin was pasted onto his face, I'm super strong and reliable now. The villains saw electricity coming out of Denki's body before realizing just how much in danger they were. The closest ones tried to attack Denki while the farthest ones tried to escape, but no matter what action they took, they were too late. A huge blast of lightning traveled from Denki's body to all the villains, simultaneously electrocuting them all. As soon as the blast died down, Hanta gingerly stepped off the pad of tape he had made to make sure there was no lingering current, before chucking a tape line to Denki. The tape attached onto Denki's back before Hanta dragged him back onto the boat. Nice job dude. Complimented Hanta, you took them all out. Wait. Replied Denki with two thumbs up and a retarded expression on his face, showing he had gone over the limit. Kyuka couldn't stop herself from falling onto the floor and laughing at his expression, while the others began figuring out if they could use the boat to drive them back on shore. Kyoka ended up with the responsibility of taking care of Denki for the while. Skull zone. Over there. Get him. Mashira was currently doing hit and run tactics, knocking out several villains, while trying to regroup with anyone he could meet up with when he heard a voice. Haha, <laughs> why don't you give up girl? Growled a voice, though we can't really see you, the rain gives us a good idea what your body is like. Mashira quickly jumped onto a nearby ceiling in time to see Toru surrounded by four other villains. The rain made her invisibility useless as they could all see an outline of her body from the water. Stay away or I'll kick all of your asses. Shouted Toru as she slowly scooted back away from them until her back hit a wall, trapping her. Now, now, if you just let us have some fun, I'm sure you can walk away from this alive, leered another. Mashira was about to intervene when the wall behind her suddenly softened, enveloping her whole body. What the? Ka, thunk. Suddenly, giant words flattened all four villains at once. Gotcha. Grin Toru as she appeared once more with Manga Fukudashi and Juzo Hananuki by her side. She looked up in time to see Mashira jumping down to meet them. Oh yeah, you're safe. Cheered Toru, suddenly hugging Mashira. Mashira blushed as he felt something soft pressing on his chest before Toru sneezed. Here, it's not much, but use this to warm keep yourself warm, offered Mashira as he took off his karate guy and put it on Toru, who clutched it. Wham, crackle. Manga suddenly created words that were emitting heat, warming them all up. Where's Manama? Asked Juzo as they all began to head towards the exit, keeping close the words Manga had created. Right here. Bragged Manama as he appeared before them, come, I found the exit already. I've already checked to see if there was anybody else with us at this zone. From what I can tell, it's only the five of us here. How do you know? Asked Mashiro. I just know, smirked Manama. Mountain zone. By random chance, all the students transported here were all females, much to the villain's delight. Wow, there's a lot of them. Blinked Mina. They seem happier than they should be, stated Ryako. Mitsuka, Momo, and Yui merely narrowed their eyes when they see most of the villains with a leering expression. All five girls were ready to fight when one of them stepped out first. Now, now, no need to fight, said the supposed leader of the group, I'm sure we can come to some sort of agreement. If you girls let my boys have fun with you, we'll return you back to your family and lives, mostly unharmed. Resist, and well we'll still have our fun. Who knows, maybe you'll enjoy it. The girls all growled at the ultimatum the man had given. You sure you can handle this? Scoff Mina, I bet you couldn't even please any woman. Then she gave a maniacal grin, plus, my quirk is acid. Bring that shit near me and I'll just smell your dick off. All the males winced and crossed their legs, while one actually went into a fetal position, crying out, why does it burn? Apparently, the said man had dated someone with a quirk similar to Mina's, and used it on his manhood. Okay, everyone except Pinky. Corrected the leader in a high-pitched voice. Suddenly, rocks hit him from behind, sending him right into Itsuka's enlarged fist, instantly crushing him. Nice one Ryako, complimented Itsuka, now let's show these punks why they shouldn't underestimate us. Right? They all responded as Momo began creating weapons for them to use. Ryako used her cork to float a few of them in the air, while Yui picked up a few pebbles and threw them towards the villains. The villains were about to scoff at the pebbles thrown when Yui put her fingers together, similar to how Chako did. The pebbles suddenly grew in size, taking out several villains in a surprise attack. Charge! Shouted Momo as she began to hit several villains with a metal staff, showing just how skillful she was in Bijatsu. Landslide zone. While the villains were waiting, some of them were starting to make bets with each other. I bet this fight will be over under a minute. Bragged one of them. I bet 30 seconds. Shouted another. Ha, I bet 10 seconds. Boasted the last one before the portal opened up to reveal Izuku, Hitashi, Senator Kabar, and Pony. 
Izuku immediately stretched his arms to the ground, zipping him to the ground faster, before suddenly inflating himself to allow the others to land on him and bounce off safely. Before anyone could comment on that, Izuku snapped back to his normal size before stretching his right leg 50 meters long, infusing one fur all over his body. Several villains tried to attack or defend themselves, only for Izuku's attack to crash right through them all. As his attack was about to hit the last two villains, the one who boasted 10 seconds turned to his friend. You know, I never specified who would win, just that the fight would be over in 10 seconds, said the villain, meaning I win the bet. You cocky ass. The female villain didn't get to finish as Izuku's attack slammed into the last of them, knocking most of them out. Whoa, overkill. Asked Sen. No, we need to regroup as fast as possible, replied Hitoshi. The faster we do, the safer everyone will be. Can you use your quirk to interrogate the ones still conscious? Asked Pony. My quirk doesn't work that way, sighed Hitoshi. I can direct a person's action, but I can't make them verbally tell me stuff. Then we'll force them to talk, grunted Izuku as he stretched his arms out and wrapped out around one of the still conscious villains, who was trying to run away. You'll never get me to talk, spat out the male villain. As Izuku tried to think of a way to make him talk, Sen decided to take over the interrogation. He lifted his hand up to the villain's eye level and activated his quirk, gyrate. His hand started to rotate at high speeds, similar to a drill. If you don't tell us what we want in the next minute, threatened Sen, you must shove this hand up your ass. Not my ass. Will the villain, tightening his anus as tight as possible, in fear of having his ass drilled in. If that doesn't help, then I'll fire my horn cannons up at two. Added Pony. I'll talk, I'll talk, cried the villain. Central Plaza entrance. Hmm, quite a few students here. I should be cautious or some might escape, Kurgiri thoughtfully thought to himself. The others nervously looked at each other before Kurgiri, who was blocking the exit. Students, when the opportunity arises, quickly escape from here, stated 13 in a serious tone, then whoever is the fastest, run towards UA, and warn the staff about the situation here. Discussing your plans in front of me? Asked Kurgiri, a bit foolish isn't it? It isn't foolish when you can't do anything to prevent it. Stated 13 before flipping open a finger cap and activating his quirk, trying to capture Kurgiri. Meanwhile, back at the middle plaza, both Lad and Shota were panting. Shota had tried to ascend the stairs, only for the Nomu to suddenly appear and punch him back into the plaza, along with Vlad. The two of them were fighting for their lives, trying to knock out as many villains as possible. The situation became worse when Nomu and Tamura entered the fight. Tamura had perfectly calculated when Shota would blink, and caught Shota's elbows with his hand. Before Shota could do anything, Tamura activated his quirk, slowly decaying Shota's elbow. Shota managed to kick Tamura away, but the damage was done. Shota could no longer use his right arm, which the other villains tried to take advantage of, but Shota easily dealt with them. However, his breath became labored as he went on to deal with the others, something Tamura called him out on. Boy, Vlad, a little help, said Shota as he turned to him, only to see Vlad's face being pounded into the ground by Nomu, blood streaming from his head. Oh, and just a heads up, I'm not the final boss, teased Tamura before the Nomu gave a roar and struck at Shota. Back at the entrance, 13 continued to use his quirk in an attempt to capture Kurigiri, only for the missed villain to open a portal right behind 13, and use his own quirk against him, much to all the students' horror. As 13 began to fall, Tanya quickly ran for the exit, following the orders 13 had given them. I can't allow that, stated Kurigiri, if you were to call the other teachers here, then it would put us at a difficult position. We need only to kill All Might. I'll stab you first, shouted Tagaru as blades grew from his arms, jumping towards Kurigiri. Naive stated Kurgiri as he suddenly warped Tagaru as he was slashing horizontally. Another warp hole suddenly appeared behind Nirinjeki, and out came Tagaru still in mid-swing. Before Nirinjeki could react, Sasuna had pushed him out of the way. Schlick. Sasuna's body neatly slid in half as Tagaru finished his slash in horror. Her top half toppled to the ground lifelessly, followed by her bottom half. Hahaha, and one falls down, laughed Kurgiri, struck down by her own classmate. This will not look good for you, eh? Tenya looked in horror, but opted to push the bile rising up in his throat, as he dashed for the door. Don't think I forgot about you. Shouted Kurgiri as he started to float towards Tenya, only to suddenly to be desperately tackled and dogpiled by Shoji, Sato, and Jiroda. Yusetsu quickly tried to weld Shoji's skin into the ground to keep Kurgiri under the dogpile, but it was useless. Kurgiri merely slipped out before chasing after Tenya. It was then Achako noticed the metal plate within the dark mist, and decided to take the risk. Just before Kurgiri overtook Tenya, Achako grabbed onto the metal plate. I don't know the theory, but if this is here, then it must mean you have a solid body here. Cried out Achako as she activated a quirk and threw Kurgiri up into the air, go, Iida. Shit, my body. Exclaimed Kurgiri as he was thrown in the air. Tenya reached the door and began trying to pry it open, just to find that it was completely locked. 
We made sure to lock every door in case this happened, taunted Kurgiri as he managed to regain control of himself. So just give. Surprise. Shouted Sasuna as her face suddenly floated in front of Kurgiri, shocking him enough to stall for a bit, before Sasuna's bottom half came up and kicked Kurgiri further. Kase had created an air platform for her bottom half to step on to catch up. Aida, we got the door. Shouted Sato as he and Gerardo ran towards the door, their fists winded back. Tenya quickly moved as the two powerhouses punched the door open, the hinges flying off from impact. Nirinjeki quickly used his quirk to an impact, and fired the debris from the impact at Kurigiri to delay him further. Bu. They all shouted as Iida ran out the door and used his high gear to speed off back to Yue. He's gone to call for backup, sighed Kurigiri, it's game over. He worked himself away from the group, intent on finding Tomyur. He scolded himself for thinking the girl was already dead. If he had been more observant, then he should have noticed the lack of blood that should have gushed out. Wu, that was close, sighed Sasuna before turning to the group, what? Why are you guys looking at me like that? You're alive, cried out Kanoko. Well of course I am, how else would I be talking? Snickered Sasuna, did you forget my quirk? Well no, but I was afraid you didn't get the chance to activate before Tagare turled off Kanoko, trying to wipe off the tears from her eyes. I ain't going anywhere yet, said Sasuna softly, robing Kanoko's head before stopping before Tagare, who seemed to be just staring at the blades on his arms. Hey, wake up, shouted Sasuna, bunking Tagare on the head. Tagare blinked for a bit, trying to shake off the sudden pain before staring at Sasuna. Takage, I'm so sorry, apologized Tagur, I should have known the villain would have teleported me like that. Even after seeing 13 sensei being taken out by his own attack, I still didn't learn. I. Enough already, Sasuna nearly shouted as she bonked his head once more, I'm still alive, so stop blubbering. She looked around before gazing out at the shattered entrance, already formulating a plan. Yurata you're one of our fastest guys here, take two people here and go after Ida. We can't risk the chance that he be ambushed on the way back to Yue. I will come to Sir Ida's aid, not a Gerardo, who will come with me. After a brief discussion, Yuga and Koji decided to go with Gerardo, as they were long-distance fighters, while Gerardo was a close-range one. As the trio left, Sasuna made a suggestion. We should see if we can't go help our teachers, suggested Sasuna. We leave some of us here to guard the entrance, while making sure to keep 13 sensei alive, while the rest of us go help out. Shoji, Yusetsu, Kanoko, and Kasei opted to stay behind to defend, while Sasuna, Tagaru, and Yurinjeki went to see if they could help out Vlad and Shota. While Tagaru still seemed dejected at his mistake, Sasuna decided to relieve that tension. You know, you can now brag to any girl how your mighty blade pierced through someone so hard that it literally split them apart, teased Sasuna. Tagaru blinked for a second before finally registering the double entente and blushing. However, as they arrived at the edge of the stairs, they could only freeze as they looked out into the central plaza in horror. Shota laid broken on the ground while Nomu manhandled him like a doll. For extra insurance, Nomu broke Shota's left arm and legs to make sure he wasn't going anymore, while Shigaraki taunted him. Shit, I know I raised his quirk thought Shota, the fact that he can easily snap my body like a twig, means this is his base strength. He's nearly as strong as All Might. Nomu slammed his skull into the ground, causing Shota to groan in pain. Suyu and the others had made it to the edge of the flood zone in time to witness Shigaraki disintegrating Shota's arm before Nomu, crushing their homeroom teacher, and shook in fear. Even Denki, who was being guided by Kyoka and was still in his herp-derp state, was shaking in fear and hugging Kyoka as a lifeline. Not that Kyoka could blame him, she was doing the same to him. The rest tried to sink lower into the water, hoping to make themselves less noticeable. Shigaraki Tamura, announced Kurigiri as he warped beside Shigaraki. How what is it? Asked Shigaraki, did you kill 13? I put him out of action, but there were students that I did not manage to disperse. Despite locking the door, the students broke the door open and allowed one to escape. Shigaraki slowly scratched his neck before frantically scratching it in anger, telling Kurgiri that if it wasn't the fact that he was their escape route, he would have killed him. Ah, game over for sure now, sighed Shigaraki, we can't win if they throw dozens of pro heroes at us. I guess our only choice now is to go home. Hearing that the villain would be leaving, Mineta leaped for joy and hugged Suyu. Whether it was unintentional or him being a pervert to the core, his hand gripped Suyu's chest and squeezed. Suyu's face blanked for a second before grabbing Mineta by the head then pushed him down into the water, drowning him for a bit, her cheeks a bit red. I guess we're safe now, sighed Hanta in relief. No, something is wrong, said Suyu, unable to shake the gut feeling in her stomach. Ah, before we leave, why don't we use this opportunity, stated Shigaraki before suddenly rushing at Suyu, to crush his pride as the symbol of peace. Before anyone could even react, Shigaraki had already placed his hand on Suyu's head, placing all five fingers on her head. To her shock and relief, she didn't disintegrate. TCH, Shigaraki clicked his tongue, you really are a cool guy aren't you, erase her head. Shota had his head raised up, using his quirk and staring at Shigaraki with a death glare. 
Shigaraki merely tilted his head for Nomu to obey and slammed Shota's head into the floor once more. Tsuyu had already slapped the hand away, only for Shigaraki to go for her head once more. Hanta quickly taped Tsuyu's back and pulled her back further when a voice called out. Shigaraki, watch out. Shigaraki jumped to the side just in time to avoid being impaled by blood spikes. Shigaraki looked to the source to see Vlad King glaring at him, his broken arm extended towards him as a trail of blood came out from his hand. You won't hurt the students while I still breathe. Growled Vlad as he tried to crawl his way to protect the students. It was clear that his attack had been a last-ditch effort that had drained all his energy. Oh, how sweet, said Shiratori sarcastically before glaring at a few villains still conscious. What are you guys staring at? Knock him out. As the other villains began to kick Vlad's already battered body, Shiratori merely sighed before turning back to his original victim, who was already swimming away with the others. Kurgiri, give me that frog girl. It'll look bad on me if I let one my original target get away, demanded Shiratori in a rather whimsical tone. What the hell was that? Cried Mineta as they tried to swim away from the central plaza. I don't know, but we have to get away from there, replied Hanta. Suddenly, as they were swimming away, a black portal appeared in front of Tsuyu, who had been looking back in fear of being chased. She had been frightened that she didn't hear her classmates yelling at her to stop. Tsuyu went right through the portal and found herself free falling right towards Shiratori's open hand. Tsuyu's life flashed before her eyes as she saw herself slowly falling to what seemed to be certain death. Her mind went to her little brother and sister, whom she would never see again. She wondered just how they would be without her to take care of them and worried. Her parents, bless their souls, were always too busy to play with them. She couldn't blame them for not making time, as they were busy with their job to pay the bills. But without her taking care of them, what would happen? Would mom be forced to work closer at home? Would her little brother and sister be forced to live somewhere else with one of their relatives? Ones that she didn't really like. Speaking of brother, she supposed that it would mean he would become the man of the house. To be one at so young made her feel guilty. And speaking of men, her mind finally flashed to Izuku, a boy whom she curious about and interested in. As I won't get to find out more about him, Jiro thought Tsuyu sadly as the hand was almost touching her head now. Shiratori seemed to be giggling in excitement at his kill, and the fact he was putting a shameful mark on Yue and All Might's record, until... Get your hands off Tsuyu-chan. Roared a voice. Izuku suddenly appeared next to Shiratori, his right arm already extended behind him as he aimed a punch at Shiratori. Arcs of lightning Izuku twisted his body as his fists started to retract to maximize the impact, all the while yelling out a phrase that helped embolden him. Smash! Cried out Izuku as he felt his fit impact on something. He had only used 40% of one for all in fear that if he overpowered it, that it could cause permanent harm to whom he was punching. Still, upon impact, gusts of wind flew out that blew Tsuyu away from Shiratori, allowing her to roll on the ground away from the hand. As the dust started to clear, Izuku clearly heard Shiratori's mocking voice. Ah, nice punch there. You a follower of All Might. Izuku looked up to see purple skin before looking up even more just to see the Nomu staring down at him. Izuku had somehow ended up punching the Nomu in the stomach, who had covered for Shiratori. How'd that thing get here so fast and block my attack? Thought Izuku, and how is it not affected by my punch? Well, no matter, stated Shiratori, the punch was powerful, but Nomu was created to fight and kill All Might. Nomu, crush the one its hands while I finish off my prey. Can't let it escape like those damn dogs from Pokemon. Nomu grabbed Izuku's wrist and squeezed it as tightly as possible while lifting him up, causing Izuku to yelp in surprise. Juru. Said Tsuyu as she leaped to the side to try to save Izuku, only for Shigaraki to appear before her once more. Now, now, do what all frogers are fated to do and die, placated Shigaraki as he raised his hands to Tsuyu. I said, growled a voice that forced Shigaraki to widen his eyes and look back at Izuku, get your damn hands off her. Izuku wound his lick back and fired it right into Shigaraki's face, leaving a foot imprint in his face, while launching him away from Tsuyu. Kurigiri. A little help here. Shouted Shigaraki as he noticed the missed villain didn't seem to be helping at all. Shigaraki turned towards Kurigiri to see him standing still and eyes blanked out, as if in a trance. Kurigiri. What are you doing? Yelled Shigaraki. Sorry, but your friend here is a little busy right now, said Hitashi as he appeared behind the missed villain, but if you want, you can leave a message. Kurigiri didn't answer, but rather glared at Hitashi. The brat had obviously done something, and without any more information, Kurigiri wasn't willing to take that chance right now. Something within his mind told him that Hitashi had been purposely trying to bait him to talk. Indeed, seconds after Izuku had tried to punch Shigaraki, Kurigiri had been about to help intervene when he heard a voice call out to him. Hey, Miss Punk. You assholes tried to have us killed, but we took them out in 10 seconds flat. Bet whatever you have planned won't even work. We could probably take it out easily. Foolish child, chuckled Kurigiri as he turned to respond, do you not? Gotcha, smirked Itashi as his cork activated, putting Kurigiri in a trance. Shigaraki turned towards Tonomu, and with a simple gesture, told Nomu to crush Itashi. 
The Noma roared, letting go of Izuku, and was about to run towards Hitashi, when he suddenly felt something wrapping around his waist over several times. Who said you could go? Grunted Izuku as he used one for all at 60%. After kicking Kurigiri, Izuku had already spun his lower body towards the ground, rotating several times before the Nomu let go. Despite Nomu trying to crush Izuku's wrists with all his strength, it had been a pointless endeavor, as Izuku's whole body was made of rubber and suffered no real damage. With a roar, Izuku managed to start rotating while swinging the Nomu like a flail. While Izuku started to spin faster and faster, his arm began to extend further and further away from his body. Several villains that were beating up Vlad, failed to notice the high-velocity object that was coming towards him. Hey what's that sound? You know, but it sounds like it's coming to. The villain didn't get to finish as Izuku used the Nomu to smash him into them, knocking them unconscious. Oklahoma Tornado Smash. Cried out Izuku as he finally released Nomu towards the landslide zone, knowing none of his classmates was there. The Nomu was sent flying right into the dirt, buried into it. The fact that Izuku was about to throw Nomu into the dirt so hard that it left an imprint shocked many of them watching. Let's get out of here. Suggested Izuku quickly. The other quickly agreed to that plan. Hanta pulled Mineta up off the water and began running towards the entrance, while Kyoka guided Denki, who was slowly recovering. Hanta stopped next to Shota before using his tape to create temporary bandages to stop the bleeding, before having Mineta place several of his balls on his back, so he could carry Shota to safety. Pony and Sen were already next to Vlad, struggling to carry him due to his size. Hitashi was about to move when he had to suddenly dodge several rocks thrown at him. Shigaraki had snapped out of his shock and scooped up some rocks before flinging them at Hitashi. Hitashi would have just blocked them with his arms if it wasn't for the fact Shigaraki rushed towards him, causing him to panic a little and try to dodge, only to trip. Before Shigaraki could get to him, though, Tsuyu had already wrapped her tongue around Hitashi's waist and leaped away with him. However, the rocks to collide into Kurigiri, snapping him out of his trance. What? Wait what happened, that brat? Growled Kurigiri. Nice to see you're finally back, snapped Shigaraki, what happened? The purple hair brat put me under his control, explained Kurigiri, probably brainwashing your puppet like quirk. Seems to be activated by responding to him. Where's the Nomu? The damn brat with the straw hat threw him into the damn wall. Kurigiri, even if we fail to kill All Might, that brat needs to die. Shouted Shigaraki as he began to violently scratch his neck again, he's like a cheat code, being able to throw Nomu like that. If he gets stronger, then he'll be like a final boss. Then perhaps it was a good call to have a few more villains waiting to intercept anyone that escaped from here, and try to warn Yue, noted Kurigiri. Indeed, Tenya was having a difficult time warning Yue about the situation, as he was dodging multiple attacks from various villains. One of them seemed to be able to control the ground while another created barriers, making it difficult for Tenya to get through. But I must get through. Shouted Tenya as he dodged another attack, my fellow classmates are counting on me. Oh shut up and die. Shouted one of the villain when she was hit by a laser beam, or rather specifically, a naval laser. Sir Ida, we have come to your aid. Shouted Gerardo as Yuga began to spam his naval laser as much as possible. Arr, these birds are annoying. Shouted another as Koda summoned a flock of birds to peck at their face. Sir Ida, use this chance and get to UA now while we distract them. Roared Gerardo as he lifted his hands before trying to land a two-handed hammer smash on one villain, who created a barrier to block it. But, started Tenya, only for Yuga to interrupt him. Go? I'll show these villains how marvelously outmatched they are. Bragged Yuga, we can take care of this. Tenya hesitated for a second before running once more. Oh no you don't. Shouted the villain who could manipulate the earth, using his court to try to block Tenya's way. It's now or never. Said Tenya as he grit his teeth, reciprocurse. Tenya suddenly shot off into the distance, escaping the blockade that had been set up. Ten seconds later, Tenya felt his engines start failing. No, not yet. Not now. Tenya thought to himself mentally, begging and willing his engines to keep working. He arrived at the entrance of the UA building when his engine gave out three seconds later. Still, Tenya tried to keep his speed up with just his legs and inevitably tripped, crashing right into the entrance door. Or rather, he would have if the door hadn't opened up. Instead, he felt himself crash landing into something very, soft and bouncy. Boo, you're a naughty boy, aren't you? Crude midnight as she withstood the impact, so eager to taste that forbidden fruit of a student-teacher relationship. Tenya would have blushed if the situation wasn't so dire. Sensei. Trouble. Yes, Jay. Villains. Shouted Tenya, almost babbling now. Midnight immediately dropped her usual teasing behavior and adopted the more serious one. Without even asking, she slammed the emergency button on her phone. Tell me everything, said Midnight in a serious tone as she ran towards the UA teacher's garage, where they kept the fastest mass transportation vehicles, with Tenya trying to keep up. It only took 10 seconds for all the staff to drop what they were doing and gather up at the garage, ready to depart. Yay, but who knows how long they can stall. When Shigaraki. 
indeed, not at Kurgiri before creating another war portal at the entrance of the Nomu hole that had been made. A second later, the Nomu roared and jumped out of his crater and into the portal, appearing beside the two main villains without a single injury. Nomu, kill those brats, shouted Shigaraki. Nomu roared and charged towards Izuku and the others. No 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 that's not good, panted Hanta as he tried to increase his speed. Keep going, urged Izuku as he stopped and turned around. Jiro, what are you planning to do? Asked Siu, her voice slightly laced with worry at what Izuku was planning. I'm going to make sure nobody gets hurt anymore, stated Izuku as he used one for all once more at 60%, now go. With a shout, Izuku bent his knees before dashing forward to meet the Nomu head-on, leaving a crater as he rushed forward. His right arm was stretched back while spinning as he ran forward. The Nomu roared as he launched a punch at Izuku at full strength. Izuku met the punch head-on as he threw his corkscrew punch right into the Nomu's stomach. The resulting clash created a dust cloud to go off, covering the scene. As the watchers coughed, trying to brush the dust off, the cloud settled with Izuku's face being punched inwards, while Izuku's fist was slightly indented into the Nomu. And that's one down. Cackled Shigaraki, I don't know who you are or how strong you are, but Nomu was bioengineered to take down All Might. No matter how strong your punch is, Nomu's quirk, shock absorption, can easily tank All Might's power, and even match him in power. And now you're dead, straw hat brat. The students watching felt their heart drop at the sight of Izuku's face being punched in. Vlad, who was still semi-conscious, felt infinite regret stabbing through his heart. Siu felt her heart being ripped apart for reasons she wasn't sure why. I see, Izuku's voice muffled out, shocking both students and villains, so that's how he's still standing up. Good to know. Nomu screeched as he wound his right fist back, ready to punch with his left fist. Izuku, his face snapping back to normal, quickly backflipped away, landing an empowered kick into the Nomu's jaw. You're alive. Cried out Pony. How? Shouted out Shigaraki, you quirk, it doesn't just let you extend your limbs and somehow make your attacks more powerful, does it? Izuku just blew raspberry as a response, furthering enraging Shigaraki. Nomu, kill him. I don't care anymore. Just kill him. Nomu roared and went to attack when he was promptly frozen in a giant ice block. Took me longer to get back here, said Shota as he appeared with the others, you grunts weren't very good at delaying us. Plus, there's no need for the symbol of peace to solve this, as we can handle this ourselves. Shigaraki growled at the growing crowd when Kurgiri suddenly tried to envelop them in a black mist. As long as I can send you all away, then there's no need for worry, chuckled Kurgiri. The students began to brace themselves, ready to fight back when... Die. Katsuki suddenly flew towards Kurgiri and tackled him straight on the metal plating that he had. Bachi you damn shadow warping asshole. Cuss Katsuki as he had a firm grip on the metal plating, you're just what I imagined you'd be. Only certain parts of your body can transform into portals. All that smoke is just to hide your real body. If you were truly smoke, then you'd never say that was dangerous earlier. So don't move, otherwise, I'll blow you up on the spot. Err, groaned Kurgiri. Tokoyami-sen. Kirishima-sen. Shouted Izuku, where did your group come from? We came from ruins. Chirped Ijiro. The conflagration zone, why? Asked Fumikage. Can you guys split off into the squall zone and mountains? Asked Izuku, some of our classmates are most likely still there, and the more people that can help out the better. You sure you don't need help here? Asked Hiryu. We have this handled, nodded Izuku please. I will go aid the souls trapped at those treacherous peaks, stated Ibar. Nodding in agreement, they split off, leaving Ijiro, Shota, Katsuki, and Izuku to handle the center. As soon as Ijiro heard that Mina was still missing, he wanted to split off to find her, though he had a small mental battle on what to do. He ended up staying as soon as Tetsutetsu promised to find her in his place. So why don't you just give up now? Grinned Ajiro as he pounded his fists together, you're outnumbered and outmatched. Ah, looks like I'm in a pinch, sighed Shigaraki, but luckily, like all games, I have a trump card. Nomu, we need our gate back. Then slaughter them all. Nomu broke out of his frozen prison, much to all their shock. Then they almost gagged as the Nomu's frozen arms and leg crumpled away in the ice, only for those limbs to regenerate. I thought his quirk was shock absorption. Gasped Izuku before narrowing his eyes, unless, he has a secondary quirk. Bingo. Prince Shigaraki, his second quirk is super regeneration. Now be a good hero and die. The Nomu suddenly dashed towards Katsuki and tried to punch him with his full strength, which if landed, would have instantly killed him. Katsuki's attention was heavily diverted to making sure Kurgiri didn't escape, and so wasn't even able to react towards Nomu. Ijiro, however, managed to react fast enough, being the closest to Katsuki, and pushed him away while hardening his skin. Nomu punched Ijiro into the ground, causing him to bound several times, crashing through several trees before crashing into a wall. Kirishima-sen. Shouted Izuku in worry. Ah, he broke my bones. Cried out Ijiro in pain. The good news was that Ijiro was still alive and conscious. 
The bad news was despite putting his arms in a cross position to defend himself, the Nomu's punch had been powerful enough to break both the radius and ulna bones in both his arms and fracture his ribs. Katsuki was well aware that if he had been hit, it would have resulted in instant death. He knew that hedgehog hair, he still didn't know anyone's name, nor did he care to do so, was more durable, and the fact that he saved him pissed him off. As Shota quickly froze Nomu's legs in desperation, Katsuki pointed his left grenade gauntlet at the Nomu, slightly grinning as he would finally be able to use one of his trump cards, he had the support company build for him. He noticed Izuku already getting out of the line of fire, pulling Shota along with him. He wasn't surprised Izuku had some sort of idea of what he was going to do. Die. Shouted Katsuki as he pulled the pin. Gurgiri managed to warp himself quickly to safety, while Shigaraki got out of the way before Katsuki pulled the pin. A massive explosion consumed Nomu as he crossed his arms to protect his head. The explosion continued to rip through the flood zone and right into the sturdy walls of Yosuche. Those walls were made to be able to even tank a few of All Might's punches. Is it over yet? Whispered Sasuna from the stairs. Her group had been too terrified to come down when they saw what had happened. Kurgiri, is our Nomu still alive? Asked Shigaraki hesitantly. I'm not sure, admitted Kurgiri. The massive explosion had been outside their calculations in terms of destructive power. The dust slowly settled to reveal Nomu against the wall without his arms or legs, its remaining skin chart. Suddenly the Nomu tilted his head back and roared as new arms and legs grew back, the charred skin falling off of him to reveal new skin. No fucking way, geeked Katsuki. Nomu managed to pry himself off the wall before glaring at Katsuki. Shota immediately sent a barrage of ice to freeze the Nomu, but the Nomu bulldozed right through it. Katsuki immediately jumped back, only for the Nomu to grab his leg, lift him up and throw him into the floor. Katsuki coughed up blood from the impact and screamed in his mind to move, as the Nomu raised both its arm, ready to hammer Katsuki in like a nail. Shit. Shouted Tagar, instantly growing blades on his arms as he charged down to help him, but he would be too slow. The Nomu struck, creating another dust cloud as he did so. Finally, when brought down, giggled Shigaraki before frowning, oh that's bullshit. The dust settled to reveal Izuku managing to not only tank the hit, but stop it stone cold, with both his hands raised up to meet the hammer fist. However, Izuku's appearance had changed a bit. Instead, his straw hat had been pulled off of his head to hang around his neck, and arcs of lightning surrounded Izuku, somehow making his usual shaggy green hair now spiked backward. The most eye-catching part in the literal sense was that bits of green lightning were streaming out of the corner of his eyes. One for all, 100%. Heads up, I have an omake, so keep reading. And done with this chapter. Cliffinger, I know. And yes, Izuku already knows full cowling, he had training with Gran Torino already during the 10-month training period. As for slight spoiler, Izuku will have trouble against Nomu, and using 100%, it'll be shown in the next chapter. As for how I organized what students would be grouped into, I literally labeled each student with a number, and used a random number generator again, except for a few people. It's useful when you're stuck thinking whom to group with. Hope you enjoyed this chapter, I decided to put both 1A and 1B together for the USG trip. Gotta have some sort of divergence, right? Can't just follow the same script. As for KH3, well I beat it in 2 days. Spend the rest of that time getting 100% on my trophy list. Also got a quite a bit of guest reviews spoiling the ending for me. Luckily, those came after I beat the game. I deleted those because I didn't want the unfortunate chance of someone who hasn't beaten the game, going through the reviews, and getting spoiled, though at this point it's highly unlikely. As for the ending, well let's say I might do another one shot about KH3, about how the final battle should have gone. Look forward to that, if I get the time to do so. Omake. If Izuku had Hashoku Hakiaka conquer, and mastered it. Basically, Izuku discovers it at a young age and trains it. Where is he? Stated Tomyur, where is All Might? I even went through the trouble of bringing all these people, too. All Might, the symbol of peace, I wonder if you'll come if we kill some kids. The fact he said that so nonchalantly and loudly for all of them to hear sent shivers down quite a few students' spines. Izuku, however, had a different chill. The fact the man would so boldly state that he would kill them. His friends. That was something he could not allow. He began to walk forward, away from the group. Midoriya. Come back over here, it's not safe. Shouted Tenya. Black King and Eraser had noticed and were also about to tell Izuku to back up when they saw his face. It was full of righteous anger that even made them hesitate. Who, Yue is going to send a kid against all of us? Asked Kurgiri, I think you vastly underestimated us all. Kill him, commanded Tomyur, and all the villains began to charge towards the stair. Midoriya, get back, said Eraserhead, shaking off the shock, let us handle this. Izuku didn't seem to listen as his hat shadowed over his eyes. Izuku started walking forward, about to drag Izuku back when she heard his warning. Still you will. I'll try to focus it more towards them, but you'll all still be affected. Sensei, I promise I won't fight, but let me make it easier for you all. 
Itsuka's eyes widened as she knew exactly what he was going to do. Everyone, grit your teeth and prepare yourself, warned Itsuka to the students. As the villains began to take the first few steps up the stairs, Izuka raised his head, glaring at the villains before letting loose his strongest blast of Hashoku Haki. The villains charging all froze as the blast went past them, going past Amur, who shivered and took a step back. The students and teacher received a smaller dose, but it also made them freeze. What the hell was that? Hissed Amur before glancing at all the villains, what are you doing? Go kill them. Kurgiri glanced at the scene before gently touching one of the villains close by, just to see him collapse, with his eyes rolled up to his head. That caused a chain reaction as all the other villains began falling down with their eyes rolled up to their head, some even foaming in the mouth. Kurgiri glanced behind him just to see it was in the central plaza that he'd been affected. Back at the flood zone right behind them, he saw bodies floating up to the surface, no doubt also unconscious. What the hell was that? Shivered Mineta, voicing a question they all had. Hashoku Haki, squeaked out Itsuka, having experienced this before, Izuku basically exerts his wills against others, and anyone with weaker wills will be rendered unconscious. Well, this makes our job easier, noted Vlad King. Nomu, kill that brat. Shouted Tomir, now shaking in fear. When Nomu didn't respond, Tomura turned around just to see Nomu just staring at Izuku. Izuku continued to glare solely on Nomu for a few more seconds. After what seemed to be an eternity, Nomu moved, but not the way Tomura expected. Nomu sank down on one knee and bowed his head to Izuku, as if he was a king. After that, cleanup wasn't too bad as Tomura and Kurgiri fled, contemplating on some life choices. The villains were unconscious for 24 hours, making it easy to transport them away. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below, and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.